Welcome to the Business of Design podcast. I'm Cheryl Horn, Director of Operations for Business of Design. A lot has changed at Business of Design since this episode originally aired. For the latest information and rates on events and membership at Business of Design, head to businessofdesign.com. Enjoy the show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Business of Design, episode 129. And man, oh man, did I need you again this week. What else is new? I have to say I'm so happy to take a break from day to day running my interior design firm and jump in the recording booth and just have a conversation with all of you. We may not have met face to face, but we do know each other. I can tell just by hearing anecdotes from your week, from your month, from your year, that we have so much in common. We get each other in a way that only one professional speaking to another professional who's doing the exact same thing can truly understand. And I truly feel so lucky to have you in my life. One of the biggest joys of my life, and I think I have a great life that's filled with fun things, but one of the biggest joys is this community of peers. And like I said, I needed you guys this week. Before I tell you about the crazy situation I found myself in this week, let me tell you about two fabulous interior design professionals from Dallas, Texas. I had the pleasure to meet them last year when I was in town, Abby Smith and Abby Ragsdale. Abby and Abby are partners, and they run an award-winning full-scale interior design firm. They specialize in highly functional kitchens and thoughtfully appointed interiors. They pride themselves on looking for unique solutions, and then they bring those solutions into play for clients through expert planning. They say that they aim to deliver well-designed spaces in which function, materials, and client experiences converge. With an emphasis on collaboration, and you're really going to get to hear that in their message today. Again, we're going to be talking with two partners, and I shared in episode 127 that I was kind of jealous of anyone who had a partner because it seemed so enviable. And after listening to these two, I think uh, that's reinforced a little bit. I love the conversation I had with Abby and Abby, and I really appreciated how they came up with their name Smith and Ragsdale and decided to avoid the cliche of being Abby and Abby or Abby squared. That's something to think about. I know I mentioned this on other episodes. My first company name was An Inside Job, and that worked really well for me in 1991. But once the internet came into play and Google was thing, I really needed to have my name in the title of the company, and that seems to work really well for me. And it sounds like the two Abbeys agree a more serious name may attract more serious customers. Based on the conversation we had, they agree on quite a lot. And I guess that makes sense if you're going to be partners, but they were candid about what happens when they don't agree. It seemed to me that if I had a partner, I imagine that we might disagree about what things should look like, the style, the mood, a particular object. But it sounds like that isn't actually a thing that causes them any grief at all. It's clear that they both bring a specific skill set to the job and they're both mature and willing to talk about anything that requires their attention. And it's really exciting because they have some big goals for the years ahead, which there's no doubt in my mind they will achieve. They are also Business of Design members and for that I'm very grateful you're going to love Abby and Abby. Before we get to the show, though, let me start the clock on my therapy session. Life was going along pretty smoothly. Uh, We have a few projects on the go, but nothing crazy. A lot of our installation work is done with a couple of little exceptions. And I got a phone call from our countertop installer, which is unusual. I don't usually get a direct phone call to my cell phone from them. So I picked up. Hey, how's it going, Joe? Hey, Kimberly, how you doing? Great. How about you? Oh, never better. Good summer. Kids are well. Awkward silence. Why is he calling? Okay, here it comes. We are doing a custom trough sink for clients, and it's being installed at the end of this week. And he says, we hit a little snag. Oh, what could the snag be, says I. And he says, we can only make the drain 24 inches wide. 
really? That's kind of odd. I wasn't expecting that because the sink is about 54 inches wide, if I recall from memory. Yeah, that's right. But uh, the drain is only 24 inches wide. That's the biggest drain we can make. And I said, well, I guess if that's the biggest drain we can make, I don't quite understand it, but okay, that's the biggest drain we can make. Other drains, regular drains are round in the middle and they're not 24 inches wide. So I guess we're fine. And he says, yeah, I guess we're fine. Oh, we are so not fine. Fast forward a few days and I go on the job site to check out the beautiful new trough sink and it's 24 inches wide. Not just the drain, the sink. Do you hear me? 24 inches wide. When I saw it, I was kind of in shock. How did this happen? What happened? Oh my gosh. So of course I get on the phone to the installers and they say that I approved the sink being 24 inches wide. But I didn't approve the sink being 24 inches wide. I said, I approved the drain being 24 inches wide. And they said, that's not our understanding. And if you want us to replace it, it's going to cost you $8,800. $8,800. That's a lot of money. What choice do you have in that situation? I do sometimes feel like a broken record, as if telling you to raise your rates is my go-to for every situation. But here it is again, right? If you're not in a position where you're really earning a great salary and you really have money to play with, when a situation like this occurs, and it does happen from time to time, I've never had a bigger error on one of my jobs. When it occurs, It's really nice to be able to know that even if I have to eat the entire $8,800, which I might, I will be fine. I will go back to the fabricator. I will have another conversation. I suspect we will settle on some sort of compromise. But again, if I had to pay the $8,800, I would survive. I don't love it. It doesn't feel good, but I would be able to do it. My clients, they're going to be unhappy as well. We promised them a finished job in two weeks, and that's just not going to be the case. So I'm going to give them the heads up, let them know how we're going to resolve it. It will be removed. It will be replaced with the sink, the correct size. And we'll get to the bottom of this 24-inch drain. I really, truly do not understand it. But it's helpful that you understand me. And I hope by sharing candidly, I'm going to be able to help someone else avoid a similar mistake. I know better than to answer an important question like that when I'm in my car on the phone and I'm not looking at a drawing. That might have helped me ask the more specific question. Yeah, but the sink will still be 54 inches wide, or maybe it wouldn't have. But in any case, be careful answering those questions on the fly, I guess is the message for today. Enough of that. We're on to much happier conversation now with Abby Ragsdale and Abby Smith. Thanks so much for being here, everyone. Welcome to the Business of Design podcast with Kimberly Selden. Business of Design is the coaching community for independent designers like you. We know it takes more than hard work and talent to successfully run a professional design firm. There are proven business strategies that can solve your immediate challenges and transform your life. Don't try to do this alone. Join today and you'll have access to more than 100 video courses, participate in monthly coaching calls, and find unlimited support within our exclusive members-only Facebook group. Unlike traditional coaching, BOD is a fast track to immediate results for independent interior designers, decorators, architects, stagers, and landscapers just like you. Monthly membership is only $79. Annual members save two months. What are you waiting for? We all know design matters. At Business of Design, we think designers matter too. Hey, Cheryl. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm wondering what happened to summer, and I'm looking at a very full fall schedule. 
I know there's so many things coming up. And uh, the first of which is BOD is turning 15 and we're celebrating our birthday party at High Point. At The Point, which is that tent. If you've ever been in the transportation terminal where all the buses are, there's this one random outdoor tent. That's The Point and that's where the party will be. Yes, so it's happening Saturday, October 19th at 5 o'clock. It is a free event. We're hoping everyone will join us, but we are also asking you to register. We want to know who's coming. We want to know if you're a member, one of our advocates. If you're brand new to Business of Design, you just want to come and hang out, we want to meet you. So again, Saturday, October 19th at 5 o'clock. Registration is open online at businessofdesign.com. So please let us know if you're coming. RSVPs are really important because we do not want to run out of champagne. We do not want to run out of cupcakes and we do not want to run out of the fun prizing we're giving away. There are going to be 15 prizes. So show up, show up on time, be ready to have some fun and hang out with the best interior design community there is in the world. Really looking forward to a great party at High Point, October 19th. And that's the evening agenda, right? But in the morning, we're at the theater, right? Cheryl, tell us the details about that. Yes, you can't come visit uh, Business of Design without some hardcore learning. So uh, in the morning at the theater at 10 o'clock, as well on the Saturday, we will be covering Have the Professional Life You've Always Wanted. So if you got into business because you thought, oh my gosh, I'm going to love working for myself. It means weekends where I can do whatever I want, flex time so I can take the children to activities and get my nails done and get my hair done and vacation time that's practically unlimited. And you found yourself thinking that that was what it was going to be like. And then you actually got into business and realized it was nothing like that. Then this is the seminar for you. We're going to talk about how you can actually get that vision to be a reality. And Cheryl, you're one of the people who was instrumental in helping me make that vision a reality. I don't think I would have done it without you kind of prodding me along the way. Well, I think part of it's just needing to be accountable. When you're on your own, it's really easy to say, I'm going to take Fridays off or I'm going to work from the country house or whatever it is. But who knows whether or not you do that, right? So having somebody else who's checking your calendar and not letting appointments go in on that day uh, certainly helps. So next up after that, we are headed straight from High Point to the retreat, which is sold out. But I've got a lot of people already inquiring about next year. So we'll get to that. But if you missed out on the retreat, if you sign up this month, you can still get in on the early bird for the conference. Conference is happening at Las Vegas Market, January 25th and 26th, uh, $11.95. um, But price goes up October 1st. So uh, check that out at businessofdesign.com and get registered. We wanted to give you extra time during the month of September. Kids are back to school. Life is super busy. We're in depression because summer is over in many cases. We wanted to give you that extra time to get that early bird pricing. Don't despair if you don't sign up during the month of October. At $13.95, this is still the best value period anywhere in the world if you want to transform your business. And then by default, you'll find out that your life has been transformed as well. For those of you who are new to business of design, you're welcome at the conference. We want you there. We will make sure that you come away with strategies, systems, and protocols you can implement into your business immediately. For those of you who have been to many conferences, you've been to many retreats, you've been a member of Business of Design for lo these many years, thank you so much. And I promise you, we will have brand new content for you as well. I'm getting really excited about the content that's happening. And I'm taking some new coaching from different professionals in order to enhance the content at the conference. And my mind is just exploding with new information. So uh, I can't wait for this to happen. January 25th and 26th, which is a Saturday and Sunday, it precedes the actual market. So if you've never been to Las Vegas market or High Point market, but you wonder what the fuss is about, this would be a great way to kick off your time at market. Come to Business of Design Conference on Saturday and Sunday. We'll take care of breakfast, lunch, all of your learnings, and there's going to be a swishy cocktail party on Sunday night. And then Monday, the market begins, and we'll give you all the tools you need to make sure you can take advantage of market as well. So everybody sign up for Business of Design Conference. I guarantee you this will be be money well spent. It will not be one of those boring conferences that are full of theory and no action. We want you to be transformed when you leave after two days. Yes.
We've also been hard at work this summer creating new courses. So if you're already a premium member or thinking about signing up, we did just launch a few new courses on the website. Uh, one of which, which people have been asking us for this one forever, travel fees, charging clients for travel, whether it's an hour and a half away or you're hopping on a plane. Um, we've added a new course, Charging for Services, Travel Fees, which covers some of the most popular questions we get on the forum all the time. So make sure you check that one out as well. Okay, Cheryl, you have to eat your vegetables and get plenty of rest because this fall is going to be super busy. But it, I'm, lo- I'm looking forward to it. We get to meet so many members face to face and we get to party at High Point. I know. I'm, what I'm could in. be more fun? A quinceanera. I've never had a quinceanera. So this will be really fun. <laughs> Talk to you soon. Bye. Hey, I'm talking to two Abbies. How lucky can a girl get? Abby with an E and Abby with no E. So Abby with an E is Abby Ragsdale and Abby with no E is Abby Smith. So I may have to refer to you as Smith and Ragsdale. Everybody listening, I can see them. You can't see them, but that's how I can distinguish them at this point. Thanks so much, you guys, for showing up today. Sure. It's our pleasure. I remember meeting you some time ago in Dallas and uh, just being kind of charmed by the fact that you're two Abbeys who found each other. And I assume that you did not go into partnership together simply because you share a first name. That's the only reason. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> no, no, it just happens that way. Yes. And what's so funny is we have two clients by the name of Abby yes. now. So on top of that, yes, just out of the blues. Yeah, so, pretty yeah. interesting. But it seems <laughs> to work itself out, you know, in the office. We kind of know who is calling for Abby or yeah. whatever. It just works out. But uh, when we so name people, the company... People we don't, name, like, just yell, like, hey, Smith, hey, Ragsdale. They just say, hey, Abby, and you guys say... say, hey, Abby, or they'll say... Abby Ragsdale, or they'll say Ragsdale. It just depends. It just, yeah. Yeah. For the most part, it works out well. Yeah. You yeah. started to say um, for the, when you guys first started. Yeah. So when we first started the business, we had talked about, well, what do we want to call our company? And it was obvious to a lot of people that we should use the Abby. But to us, we felt like it was a little gimmicky. Yeah. So we decided not to. But since then, almost every client has come up with some kind of a, you should have called yourselves. <laughs> yeah, we get nicknames. We've been called yes. Dose Abbeys, yes. Abby 1 and Abby 2, like very Dr. Seuss. Um, just, yeah, it's right. It's, it's funny. Been funny. Abby Squared. Yeah. Abby yes, that one of them. Yes, one. that was mine. The Abby. I, I kind of feel like you might be right about that, Smith, that calling yourselves Abby and Abby or something might have felt a little gimmicky, where I think Mm -hmm. Ragsdale and Smith seems like a serious interior design firm. Yes. We, you know, knew we were aiming to reach a higher level of clientele just based on our individual skill sets and the kind of work we wanted to do. And that was part of the reason as well that we didn't want the gimmicky sounding name. But how did you even know to become partners? Like what was the moment where you said, I think we should join forces? Well, I would say that um, it was something that developed over time Um, Because Abby and I had worked on individual projects together. I was a designer um, working on kitchen design uh, and whole house design as well and hired Abby and the company that that she worked for to come in and work with me on the cabinetry and layout. And we just really clicked. We had synergy. And that being said, um, it was after we had uh, been awarded the Sub-Zero Wolf Regional Kitchen Design Award for one of the kitchens that we had worked on together. We went to dinner to celebrate mm-hmm. and sitting around the table and just, it just, you know, just why don't we go into business together? Yeah. It just you know, started. it just seemed like an appropriate thing to do. And we threw it out on the table about six months later, Abby came back yeah. and um, thought of, had thought about it, and I let her... Yeah, at the time, I had taken 
a little bit of a break from the industry for a few personal reasons. And so I wasn't totally sure for a while how much I wanted to get back into it, but I really did think about it. And at, you know, while I, I actually believe we start, Abby and I started working on another project during the time in which we had won the award. So while we were at the Sub-Zero Wolf Gala, we were in the hotel room working on this other project together. And so we realized that it just, you know, our collaboration back and forth, it just meshed really well. And so it just, you know, Mm -hmm. like Abby said, over a few months, it evolved into, well, why not? Let's let's see what happens. Sure. And I was used to working with, a uh, partner. I worked with my husband for a number of years, who's a builder as well, and he was about to retire. And I really felt like joining forces with another person felt right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Strengthen that. Yes. When you're, when you're considering doing something like this, what are the things that come to mind that you want to be careful about? What are the things that make you go, wait, stop, pause? Sure. I'm not sure about this. Sure. Well, I would say uh, if the person, their personality, first mm-hmm. of all, the design aesthetic, their follow through commitment. And we spent probably three or four months just meeting and strategizing. Yeah. And we went through all the details, started developing a business plan, really kind of felt each other out to see where we each stood on these issues Mm -hmm. and realized that we were on the same page. We were willing to both give and bring to the table the same amount of commitment. Oh, wow. So this wasn't like drinks at a bar, too many cosmopolitans, shake hands, we're in business. You guys were very thoughtful. We really did try to be thoughtful. Like like Abby said, we met a lot because it was important for both of us to not go into it lightly. So we needed to understand each other's a reason for doing it and B what, what do you expect from it? Um, what are you willing mm-hmm. to put into it? And so we had a lot of those conversations and actually at that time started working on some projects yes. together because they just started coming to us. Right. So, um, we had a few projects that we had started, you know, leads we had gotten off internet or, um, from referrals, things like that, that knew one or both of us. And so we were simultaneously working on projects as we were strategizing and and, um, planning for what Mm -hmm. we wanted this to look like. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Amazing. So you must now have, how many years has it been that you've been partners? Three and three. a half, almost yeah. Yeah, three and a half. Three, three and a half. So you've learned a few things beginning yeah. with what? What would you say has really been instrumental in keeping the partnership vital? Oh my gosh, where to start? Uh, just everything. I think we both bring to the table different strengths. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so we have learned, first of all, from each other, I think, have developed our ability to see things in a way that maybe we would not have looked at if we were still working independently. Um, I would say everything from the uh, financial end of the Mm -hmm. business, I think it was really critical that we set the, uh, the priorities in place in advance. And it's something that because we were both in the business, I think we took it more seriously than before when I was independent and I had a bookkeeper and I just let her worry about everything. I just fed her all the documentation. She created the estimates. She followed the tracking and invoices and everything. And I just pretty much went about my business. Well, when we got together and started working together on this, the bottom line was us. We stopped, looked at everything, decided how it worked best for us and put policies into place, which you don't necessarily do when you're an independent person working. When you have a company or a business partner, it's much easier to uh, feel committed. Mm -hmm. I I definitely agree with that. I think there's an account, there's just a natural accountability that happens when you have 
some, you know, not depending on you, but you have someone else that you're both responsible for something. And so, mm-hmm. it, you know, inadvertently we hold each other accountable in that way. And, you know, I came from a background where I worked for a, a showroom, worked for a design firm. And so I hadn't had my own independent business, but I realized pretty quickly that I'm one of those people that I like to know as much as I possibly can about what's going on at all times. And so it was important to me to have those systems and have all of those things in place. And I think we finally developed, you know, these are the things we need to look at. This is what works for us. These are the things someone else can handle. These Mm -hmm. are the things we need to be readily involved in and be aware of. And I want to make sure I point out to people listening, most of the people listening don't have a partner. And it's something I've always, always, always wanted. I just thought it would just solve so many problems to have a partner. Mm. And I had really unrealistic ideas about how that happened and how that would work. And it just seemed like a unicorn. You know, the partner would do all the things that I didn't want to do. But for those people listening to something you just said which is so true. I think um, Abby Smith said it. When you're working on your own, you don't necessarily have policies and procedures. Mm -hmm. And that is something that holds so many design firms back because the truth is you need them more than you do when you have a partner, Mm -hmm. not less. So I just want to make sure everybody knows we weren't letting them off the hook from creating (laughs) those policies and procedures, right? And a business plan, right? And just... Absolutely. How much do you want to make? How, what are we going to do about extra money? What happens then? Do we, do we take it out? Do we invest it back in the company? There's so many questions, right? Yeah, those are the issues we've been grappling with. Yeah, the financial end of it this last six months has really been what we've been tackling. Um, the business has been successful. We uh, brought in revenue, but there's also, you know, times where it slows down. Mm-hmm. How are we prepared for that as a company? Is right. your idea of how to uh, reinvest the same as my idea, you know, that type of thing. Right. And I know my accountant, as we get toward the end of the year, and for me, that happens uh, end of August. So about now, he'll say, do you need a new computer? Do you need a new iPod? Do you need a new phone? Now's the time to buy it. Don't wait until the beginning of next year. We go out and we purchase all of our client gifts for the end of the year before the end of August so that I can have a tax write-off for those things this oh, year. That's right. Great. I yes. know. Isn't that such a good idea? So there's a lot of things that I don't have to consult with a partner about. I can go out and buy a new computer and a laptop or whatever. I don't have to ask anyone's permission. Or you guys might need to check in and say, hey, I need a new laptop. How about you? Yes. Right. And we do depend on our accountant, our CPA, to really help us. We're an LLC and it, he told us what we can and can't do. Yeah. yeah. How, to, how to work with uh, employees, which... Or, uh, in, or independent, independent contractors, contractors, what would be best for our business. Right. Things like that. Right. Um, investment, guys, things like that. Do you guys have employees or do you use independent contractors? Currently, we're still using independent contractors. Yeah, because... It sounds like maybe you're fantasizing about employees. What's the difference in your mind, do you think? Um, employees, there's there's a more expense with employees. And um, we've just been advised to work with independent contractors as needed until we are at a phase where it makes sense for us financially sure. to invest in actual employees. Mm-hmm. So um, as far as the difference, you know, we... We have some good independent contractors that we've been working with that are very dependable, that do like how we work. And so um, we've got, you know, even though it's not an employee structure, we still feel like we have a good team developed because we all have the same common goal for the project at hand or projects at hand that that person may be working Mm -hmm. on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It seems the way of the future is more independent contractor driven. Uh Um, And there, for me, there's, and it, there was an adjustment going from one to the other and, and having both mm-hmm. and learning how, how does that work now? So that's something right. anyway, everybody can relate to. They appreciate the flexibility right. too in their life. And, uh, you know, it is a team. Um, we really look for someone who is comfortable working with us and someone who represents themselves well with clients and um, is comfortable with the level of business that we do. 
And uh, so it's been good for us as far as our growth Mm -hmm. goes. Perhaps it's helpful to those listening to just discuss if you are thinking about a partnership, what are those things that you need to think about? First of all, to, to do a partnership, what are you both bringing to the table? Okay. Do your strengths overlap or do they kind of, are they parallel in what their, the strengths are? I think our partnership works well because we have different strengths that we bring to the table for the same end goal. Otherwise, I think that there would be more ego that Mm -hmm. gets involved if you both have the exact same skill set and you're you're doing the same things and um, it's kind of like sibling rivalry. So for us, I would say look for a partner that has the same goals, the same willingness to grow and and be adventuresome and and you know be honest but yet bring something different to the table and I think our personalities are different Mm -hmm. and our ages are different I've been in the business longer than Abby has is a nice way to put it and um, so I've had a depth of experience with a number of clients and so um my whole thing has been uh, driven by experience. And Abby brings a fresh new perspective to the business. Um, she's a millennial. She kind of the teetering end of millennial. Uh, yeah. I kind of, yeah. And she can talk about that. I think our skill sets are different enough to where it was really very powerful when we got together mm-hmm. to create Smith and Ragsdale. Yeah, I think, you know, what we talked about a little bit earlier, too, is kind of having that test run. We worked together prior to partnering, so we were able to see how we bounced ideas off of each other and, you know, didn't really ever talk about business goals and things like that at that time, but we realized that we collaborate very very successfully on actual design work. Yes. And so having that test run definitely helped for, you know, the future partnership, certainly. Mm -hmm. And I don't want to say opposites attract, but just finding someone where your skills complement each other rather than compete. And I don't feel like there's a lot of competition in our office. I mean, we might have different ideas about how something should finish out, but it's not from a competitive angle. So it's more of a let's let's collaborate and find the best solution. And so I think it's important to to recognize Mm -hmm. that with someone. It's almost like you want to consider the best practices for hiring as you're thinking of working with this partner, right? Because my old style of hiring is somebody would come in the office and I'd go, oh my God, she's super fun. I love her. She's hired. And it would be a disaster because she's just like me. I already have me. I don't need me. Yes. So maybe as you're thinking about, hmm, should I go into partnership with this person? You rely on those hiring practices. And then as um, Ragsdale over there said, you would do the test run seems really important to me. So if you weren't in a position where one was a cabinetry company and one was a designer, um, I'm wondering how you might do the test run. I suppose you could just select one client between the two of you and do one project before you agree to be partners. Absolutely. I think that's a great idea. I mean, in this industry, I feel like it's evolved into more of a collaborative industry anyway, whereas when Mm -hmm. I first started, I've been in the industry 11 years, I feel like people were withholding information and and there was a lot of ego, but things things have changed and we, you know, find ourselves part of different groups of designers where we're all bouncing ideas off each other for business or for marketing and things like that. And, um, you know, the same thing can happen. You can find yourself and another designer and maybe one's more furnishings focused, one's more kitchen and bath focused, and you can collaborate on a project together. Or, you know, maybe you have someone with whom you have a similar aesthetic and you want to go, you know, go at a project just just to see. I think that's a great idea. Right. Right. Is there any reason the partner would have to be in the same city as you? Um, I mean, with Zoom and all the tools now. 
necessarily. It just it's depends helpful. on the project. It's helpful for the day to day. Yeah. Um, but for instance, our largest client was in Austin. So it's the same kind of thing. Is it helpful to have a client in the same city as you since we're in Dallas? You know, you have to work out the kinks. You have to work out the way to make it happen. Okay. And, it, and I think it depends too on how you delegate the responsibilities. So with technology, with Zoom, with things like that, if you, you know, we have some projects where one of us is taking more of a lead role in that project um, mm -hmm. than the other. And so, you know, for the people who might want to do this in, in other states, I mean, I, I know people who do that. They have a partnership and one lives in one state, one lives in the other. I think it is totally possible. I think you just have to be very clear on what the responsibilities are and what the goals are. And um, just with the understanding that you may or may not get to see and touch every sample, you you know may or may not get to interact with the client mm -hmm. as regularly, but um, you know, it just, it kind of depends on how you want to structure your business. It seems to me that conflict or, I mean, there must be moments where you guys are not in alignment on something mm -hmm. like it's how could it not it's like a marriage right like there are going to be times when you're just in disagreement did you think ahead of time about your conflict resolution style was that something you discussed and whether or not that was compatible or did that come out during the test runs I don't know if we ever like officially said let's talk about conflict resolution I think it we both don't like to let things fester. And that was pretty obvious when we were, you know, planning, like strategizing and everything. I wouldn't say there's minimal conflict, but because we both don't like to let things sit, we do talk about it. And right. so our conflict resolution is talk about it. Like what's going on? Is there something bothering you? Um, we actually schedule meetings. And we do schedule meetings. to Away from things. the office. Yeah. Definitely to not let the office uh, interfere, the day-to-day -day office mess, uh, <laughs> to interfere with what we really need to accomplish when we're having these meetings. And, you know, they're, they're kind of a, a collaborative time to sit down and, and decide, well, I'm really not happy with the way this is going, or how about looking at doing um, this another way? Do we need to bring on new help? Mm -hmm. What about salary? Well, not salary, hourly compensation um, for the people who are um, assisting us. Where do we want the business to be in six months? You know, that type of thing. We also talk about ways to better service our clients at that time, you know, brainstorm, are we going to have a holiday party? You right. know, these kind of things. Very right. important. It sounds like some of these might be regularly scheduled meetings. We know every year we're going to have a holiday party, so we've got to meet about that. We know every year we have to discuss how much salary we want to take out of the business, so we need to discuss that. But in this situation where there's some situation and it surprised you, you weren't prepared for it, you're not terribly keen to have a conversation with each other about it because it might feel like it's going to be contentious in those moments one of you will throw down a flag and say well, I think we need an off-site oh, yeah we'll, we'll shut the office our we have a separate office from the rest of the studio so we shut our office door and have a conversation we're adults right and you know feeling feelings happen emotions happen but we both tend to look past that so that we can find a resolution. Seems like that might be one of the most important things you want to figure out about your new partner. What's their style of communication yes. in the event things go wrong? Because I can't imagine if one of you wants to stick your head in the sand and the other one wants to talk about it, that it would ultimately be very successful. Mm -hmm. I would agree with that. In the test run, the strategizing, I mean, even, you know, you start to have difficult conversations and what we call not fun conversations up front. So you, you start to gauge what someone's resolution style is, how, you know, how they're going to react to conflict or pushback or anything like that. And um, you just, like a marriage, you do have to let it evolve naturally, pick your mm -hmm. battles, mm -hmm. understand that, okay, I'm going to well, I'm going to try to understand this perspective before I try to impose my own. And um, yeah, you just 
have to approach it maturely, I guess. So you know what's interesting about this? You would think being in an interior design business that we would have more conflict about the differences in way we see accomplishing a design or finishing a design or coming up with a concept. Those barely exist. Yeah. I don't think I would be happy working with a partner who had a completely off the walls design aesthetic or, or far from what um, I have. I think we speak the same visual language. Right. So um, I think what we do as partners, we enhance each other's visual skills rather than uh, compete. And I think that that's the essence of our strength. I think the conflict comes with the operations mm -hmm. and the financials. And just because one of us is busy doing something else and maybe we don't have our finger on that, the pulse of what's happening in a day-to-day -day financially, we'll stop and say, okay, let's schedule, and we do it right on our computers, let's schedule a financial meeting. Yeah. We try to do that like twice a month. Let's meet our accountant four times a year. These are all things that are scheduled already. You know, it's not even conflict about the financials and things like that as much as it is. Those aren't fun conversations. So yeah. you just have to talk about serious things. It's not the creative stuff. side of design. It's not why most of us got into this industry to begin with. We didn't want to do the business side of it. But, you know, you have to. You have to do it to have a company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that to me seems like another bucket that would have to be filled up on both sides of the equation. You both would have to want to have systems and procedures and protocols that um, run the business because I can't imagine mm -hmm. one of you having those things and the other one being a fly by the seat of my pants kind of person. So we establish, you know, internal procedures for how we approach projects. We have our procedures for how the financials are designated and which is very similar to a profit first. I feel like I've heard that on the podcast before. Someone's brought that up before. Um, we have our own steps that we follow different phases of the project and because design is creative, and I'm about to make some hand motions, and I know one, <laughs> no, people aren't going to be able to see those, but be because design is a creative industry, it tends to just like flow and go in circles and all that. And so we have the steps to funnel everything through, uh, you know, as, as you're very aware of, but we have agreed on these systems. It's not, I have my system, Abby has her system, and then the other people working with us have their systems. We've agreed on these team systems because... You know, you have to have something in place so that you have a goal. You have something to refer back to when things get off kilter. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's with everything. That's with when we schedule meetings, like Abby's been talking about. When we talk about financials, we have all of these different reports, different things that we look at each time. Um, we, you know, set goals for each project and have what we call our unique design criteria, which are adjectives that describe the project. Everything filters back through that. So that's, you know, having those systems in place, even if there is, if there are hurt feelings or any conflict, we've agreed to filter things back through whatever system's appropriate so that we can move forward. We, we accept that these things are always going to be changing and we're always going to be fine-tuning our systems and we're always going to be finding more efficient ways to do this and learning how to delegate this and this and this and becoming better at our business and even fine-tuning, you know, how we're reaching out to clients and mm -hmm. all, of, all of that. So, In what ways have the last three years just surprised and delighted you guys? Like, I, I remember meeting you in Dallas and just thinking, like, you, you seem like you are in such sync with each other and so mature, not in age, but in wisdom. For me, I feel like I've grown a lot as a person in the last three years, just taking on more responsibility and more ownership of my own, you know, life and direction mm -hmm. and all of that. I think, you know, a lot of people tend to let life happen to them. Um, and I definitely feel like I'm in a position where I'm not letting that happen and that just feels very good. And so I do delight in that. 
and just, you know, the projects we've been able to mm-hmm. work on have looking been fantastic. Back, just looking back on the number of projects, the wonderful clients we've yeah, worked we've, with, just, I think the, the fact that we are two people doing this has made the projects so much more special. Yeah, I think it's sure. the best word to use. Um, yes, we could have done it independently, but what we both bring to the table brought such a... Um, a great collaboration and an, and an end product. And I think our clients recognize yeah. that too. Yeah. We've, um, you know, it's, it's elevated. Everything seems just like a little, a step above where it might have been otherwise. If we were independent. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I'll be excited to check in with you guys after you get a year of being really focused on your financials, because yes. it's, it's funny how once you just really put your attention there Yes. It seems to pick up speed and momentum uh, yeah. just just by giving it your attention. Yeah, yes. for sure. You know, when we first started out, I have to say that one of the interns we had mentioned the business of design. Mm-hmm. And uh, she brought a book to yeah. the office. And, um, you know, we started thinking about, well, what? look at all this stuff we're missing that this could be so helpful in getting really us on the right path. Yeah, like we haven't even thought about this. Oh, yes. this is good, you know. So, so that's, it gave us the backbone. Yeah. Um, your program gave us the backbone that we needed. We certainly refer to uh, the business of design strategies and everything all the time. And it gave us the confidence yeah. to charge more. Yeah. <laughs> so, which has been something that I have to say, comparatively speaking, charging for hours plus marking up is is the way it should be. But in the past, I was more hesitant. I would give a, well, here's the price for a project, an overall price. And then I would do maybe a markup on furnishings or something else and not making the same amount of income. And it's just, it's given us an opportunity to to venture out from what we've been doing. Mm -hmm. Well, and now you have an obligation and a responsibility to each other to be successful. So it's no longer just, I need to make money, but I have this partner that I care about and she deserves also to have a lifestyle uh, that's supported by this business, Mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It becomes a higher purpose. Yeah, it definitely, definitely does. For those of us who don't have a partner, we can still have a synergy and partnership with a fellow designer, and we can still reveal what's happening behind the scenes with each other and be accountable to one another, right? Like, we don't have to wait for the perfect partner to come along. It's okay to be single and thriving, right? (laughs) Sounds like you guys are continuing to evolve. So what are you excited about going forward? Oh, I, you know what? I I would love to tackle some projects like maybe restaurants. Yeah. Maybe hotels. Yeah. Some uh, a little bit more commercial. um, Some projects where we work with the builder from and the client from the ground up, which we've recently started doing more of that. So really stretching us as designers doing something that we haven't done in the past would be really exciting. We also talked about product design. Yeah. Is this something we want to do? Yeah. Um, do we want to have a um, an online presence as far as selling products that we really like? Maybe it's art, maybe it's accessories, you know, to put our mark on it. These right. are all things that we have explored in the past and right. we're still talking about. And, and those things take time to develop. And so these are the mm-hmm. brainstorming, the, you know, just the conversations. We talk a lot about this type of thing. And so just seeing, you know, what... We're, we're definitely both in a growth mindset. So seeing what does that mean? What branch makes sense to follow next? Mm-hmm. So It seems like Dallas is an ideal market for all of this too. Like it's always booming. I don't think I've ever been to Dallas and not seen it like fully alive and booming and building everywhere. And 
Oh my gosh. I was just there last week. My girlfriend, we, she rented a box so we could all go see Queen. Oh, so it's real. She's my oldest friend and her mom was there with us, which was just so fun. Oh my God. It was so good. We like to end every show with design intervention. Did you guys, did you partners create a single design intervention or do you have individual ones? Um, I think they're individual. And for mine, it's just uh, the, the whole becomes greater than the parts. I just think that it just describes exactly the way I feel about it. Um, we're so much stronger together as a team when uh, if we were doing this individually, I think it just the whole becomes greater than the parts and that the benefits outweigh the cost of uh, the time cost and so forth, the the energy that it takes. So those are my two takeaways. And, you know, mine, of course, I agree with everything Abby's saying. And then also just with partnership and really with any relationship, whether it be friendship, professional, you know, romantic, what have you, you do have to seek first to understand each other, but just always be willing to learn from each other because when you both approach it that way, then you're both always growing. So, um, you know, it's, it's partnership isn't necessarily for everyone from a business standpoint, but I think if you both go into it seeking to understand each other and move forward together, then I think there is strength in that. So listening in the spirit of openness, right? Yes. And that, that works for all of us, even like with our clients, right? When our clients have an oh, issue, yeah. to not be ready to defend, just stop, listen. Yes. Take ownership. Accept yeah. it. Take ownership. Yeah. Really good advice from both of you. And I am super excited to hear how leaps and bounds are going to happen for you in the next year or so. You go. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We appreciate all the advice that you have Thank you for being a part of the Business of Design community. If you love what you hear on the podcast, take the next step by signing up at businessofdesign.com. As our thank you, you'll gain access to Business of Design's 15-step project management strategy, a free introductory course which includes three Business of Design systems you can implement for immediate results. And when you're ready for success, a Business of Design membership, monthly or annual, will dramatically improve your business and your life. What are you waiting for? Together, we will achieve extraordinary results. Start today.